Hey guys, um, I've been like, getting a lot of requests lately to post how to set up ATCS monitor and all, and I figured I'd make a video, try and make it as short as possible, about how to set up ATCS. Um, so, just to get it over with, um, go to yahoo.com, you're gonna need an account there to download everything. Get the actual application, you need to go into the file. Once you are approved, Oh, yeah, once you're approved into the group, you're gonna go into the files folder, go to application, and then ATCS mon 410exe right there. Um, gonna download the file, all the instructions, and it should put it on your desktop, or it might ask you where do you want to install it all. Um, it's gonna put a file in your program files folder under the C drive and all, so that you will need um next step you're gonna wanna go into your files folder again and type in or go to the data files now there are many railroads you can do for this I'm just gonna use CSX because that's the easiest one for me and that's right where I live so mine is the Baltimore division and I'm gonna do the CSX Philadelphia subdivision the BE desk so you're gonna wanna left click on that and where it says save or open save or save as or cancel and all, you want to click save as. That's just my computer. Yours probably won't do that, but you're going to go into the C drive, program files, and then ATCS files. You're going to go into that and go into your downloads file. Now, you're going to download the file, the whole folder into this folder. And then next step is going to be going into that and placing certain files in certain places so you're going to save that, I already have it downloaded now you're going to want to go into your C drive or that same folder that you were at C drive program files ATCS monitor downloads now for Windows 7 it has to be a compatibility file because it's a newer system and all but if you have XP or Vista it should be fine um, so you're going to click that, and then go into that folder you just saved. Now you'll get a couple files, there will be a layout file and an MCP file, maybe more, it depends on what, um, railroad you're using and all. But, um, you're going to want to copy each of these into their respective folders from the main ATCS folder. There's a layout folder and an MCP file. Obviously the .lay file will go in the layouts, with all the, with my already downloaded ones and MCPs will go on that one. Um, I forgot to mention this too. When you first open the program, you are going to get a MetroLink like sample of showing you how it works and all, and showing examples. But we can, once we set everything up, it'll go away and all. So, once you're done that, you're going to want to go into the I don't know why I did that, but you want to actually go into your ATCS program. Now you guys will get a start a uh, thing started running because there'll be MetroLink and all, but don't worry about that. Um, you want to go into the Options tab under Configure, and we're gonna have to do a couple things first. D under the Data Source, you're going to want to click under data source you want to click network connection next you want to go well I already have them in here for some reason but you want to click add and you'll get this pop up well this is where you have to go back to Yahoo group for ATCS click on database I believe and then click ATCS servers you'll get a bunch of text but it's not that hard to understand you got all the railroads and all cause you gotta get it's a place where you're gonna get your information about like where trains are and all but you're gonna wanna scroll through the pages until you get to your railroads um the correct files for your railroad and well and subdivision too so like so you got CSX Cumberland Division Pittsburgh, Baltimore Terminal, and then here we go. We have the CSX Philadelphia sub right there. It's got two files here. 
Um, but this is what you're looking at. Oh, you're gonna be looking at this file right here, or this whole sentence right there. You're gonna want to copy everything from the g and dot org all the way over to the c and csx. You're gonna copy that and place that. Well, it probably closed out your pop up, but you're gonna click add, and that's gonna go in the IP address or host name. That's where you're gonna paste that. Now, after you do that, you're gonna go into port number. Port number is gonna be that number next to it, so it's 4800 in this case. So type in 4800. It might be good to remember to write it down so it doesn't erase everything. And then you're gonna click enabled. That will enable that checkbox right there and it will be monitoring that server. Now you're gonna go back and do the other one right above it. It's just a two instead of a one. Do everything the same that you just did. Make sure they're both enabled. And I think there should be one for the Metrolink or there should between server mode listener and the two you just added, there should be a couple more. You can uncheck them. Because I don't think you really need them on. So next step. Let's see, I'm just looking off of the ATCS instruction manual, which is located on the Yahoo group, just so I don't miss anything at all. You're going to want to go to the general, or click apply, then go to general, and you're going to want to click these things. You want to click minimize to system tray icon, save settings on exit should be already done, and begin capturing on startup. And then, this must be an old thing, but it says enable toolbar traffic LED. I don't think that's on here anymore. It must be a new. And then, max plot points, you want to do 200. And then, yeah, it's already checked. Now you want to click apply. Now, the next step click on Windows. You want to make Max messages should be 1000. Foreground color black. Background color white. Uncheck binary from control and indication format. Unclick the binary. So you should have hexadecimal and mnemonics or whatever it is checked. Um, for foreground color, it should be black. Background color white. Control color blue, indication color red, and other color just leave it orange or whatever it came as. Um, everything else is the same except for down here, hex dump, whatever that is. Just click instead of datagram user data, use complete frame. Um, then you want to click apply. Next, you want to go into display. Now, the layout file is where that dot lay comes in. I already have it set up on there, but you're going to want to go to the CS, well, whatever the one you put into the layouts file, you want to click on that, and it should put that on there. Now, mine, for some reason, started getting data and all, so, but that might not be, that might happen on yours, it might not happen on yours. Who knows? But you're going to click apply. So next you want to go to protocol now should be ATCS right there don't worry about these it looks like you can't change them and everything else should be matching this well except for this everything should be matching that click apply again Now go to G DSP GPS. Should be matching mine the way it is right now, or something else. This is kind of confusing part, but it's a lot of technical stuff. If you know stuff about EOT and all this stuff, then go ahead and set it up. You're gonna know a lot about it. Um. 
If you don't know whatever I'm talking about in those last 30 seconds, then don't worry about it. Just make it look like my screen. Um, so everything else should look like that. Click apply, and then click OK. Now, next thing. For some reason, I already have um, MCPs and all in it, but you want to go into configure now and click MCP information. Now, this is where the MCP comes in. You want to click import and then go to the, your MCP that you put into that folder. The MCP file, or MCP folder. That should import them all. You're not really going to notice it except for that little load bar. And then click close. Once you do that, um, you want to go to the top left file. Save profile as and give it a name, whatever you want to make it. I'm just going to name mine test and click save. Now, for yours, it may not be showing all this information yet. It could be, depends on how it was set up. But next, you want to click on this button right here. This will start monitoring everything and you'll start seeing data on your thing. Like right now, if you pulled it up, you might see stuff, you might not. This is what I got, but you definitely want to go in and click monitor MCPs. You'll get all this data. You're not gonna know. You don't gotta worry about all this stuff showing up right there. But you want to go in the view and then dispatcher display, and should pop up. You got it right there. Um, for some reason this looks different than what mine looked like. Because usually these are lit up a different color and all. I don't know if I missed a step. But it's alright. As long as it's showing that you've got train like you can see. Clear block, occupied block, a couple more. And all. It took me a while to understand the occupied blocks and all that. But if I go in and open up my other one. My actual one that I use while I'm out. Once it loads and all, because it sometimes freezes, yeah. And this gets a lot of data because I'm on a different server instead of the other one. And it should start to show you some trains. It starts slow, but you've got train lined out of there and all. Sorry if I messed up a little bit at the end, but if you need help, you can always contact the ATCS Yahoo group. Like, just post a message from yourself saying, hey, I need help with this. This is not working, and they can help you. Hopefully someone out there can help you. So, but at least I got you guys through the hard part of it. Now you just got to figure out how to get the colors or these things to light up. Hopefully it works for you. Sorry if I messed up at all, but the hard part was through finding all that information in the files. So, hope you guys got what you needed out of this video. This is the Ultimate Rail Fanner. Hope you guys like my videos. Please subscribe. And I'll be back within a day uploading another video. Have a good day.